Infrastructure development has been a core focus of the Australian government. We have announced plans to commit more than 75 billion Australian dollars over the next 10 years, building new and improving existing road, freight, rail, and urban transit networks. Investment by supers has occurred in response to a few key factors. Number one, increased opportunities for private financing. Secondly, strong financial performance of infrastructure assets. And more importantly, a desire to match liabilities to assets. With the growth of supers projected to hit $3 trillion in AUM by 2023, it is hard to ignore their role in the asset class. Some super schemes have had great success with the asset class over the past 10 years. Our data shows that the number of completed infrastructure deals in Australia have nearly doubled since the 2008 global financial crisis, a record high over the last decade. Generally, infrastructure is known to have defensive and income generating qualities. Some supers actually told us that core assets, which are secondary and brownfield stage projects, are the preferred asset type for them, as they have little to no operational or construction risk, and most also acknowledge the need to invest through market cycles. That being said, some have expressed concerns that it is hard to build a strong portfolio when the number of quality assets is scarce. Accessibility is another factor when it comes to infrastructure. One industry fund commented on the changing investment landscape where opportunity sets are more accessible when a super fund teams up with a fund manager, which is normally done through a co-investment vehicle or a consortium of super funds or by going direct if possible. Consultants that we spoke to noted that the average number of co-investment mandates have been rising in the domestic market. Thus far, We've seen a huge push from the Australian regulators for non-performing super funds to be consolidated. This most likely means that the average fund size will increase, making investments more viable for previously smaller funds. In the long run, this ultimately provides a good diversification benefit to their members' retirement portfolio. Globally, supers have been one of the pioneer investors in infrastructure. However, they have only been active in the asset class for the past 20 years. Most supers consider this as a relatively new asset class and see that there is still room for growth. From another perspective, supers are becoming increasingly cautious as historical returns were shaped by a low interest rate environment and easy access to cheap borrowing. Some industry funds we interviewed explained that they are seeing their returns gradually decreasing. However, on a broad market level, no one is really looking to reduce their allocations going forward.